where there's one topic that attracts this course throughout the year at any level, the economy. And that's because it's something that impacts each and every individual in the society. Mary Therese, tell us, what are some of those issues you've been looking at? The economy was affected by the changeover from the $100 cotton note to the $100 polymer note. And let's not forget Unipet. They were affected very badly when the Parrier company decided that they weren't going to give them any gas. A lot of uh, consumers were very frustrated because of the long, long lines as they waited for gas. Marijuana was decriminalized and the Prime Minister hoped that this was going to take a lot less of the taxpayers' money going into the penal system. I think we should have a look at it. Early in December, weeks before Christmas, government took a bold step to transition to the new Polymer $100 note from the cotton-based bill. The three-month transition period required by law was changed to a two-week period and the nation was given a deadline of December 31st to change their old notes for the new ones. Making the announcement, Minister of National Security Stuart Young said the move was intended to fight corruption and money laundering. That in order for us to fight money laundering, including the financing of drugs, narcotics and illegal firearms, tax evasion, and what is known as the black money economy, corruption, counterfeiting, and other related problems that the government should withdraw from circulation the current Trinidad and Tobago $100 note. The arrival of the notes two days after the announcement led to heightened security in and around the Central Bank, resulting in traffic congestion throughout the city. And on the following Monday, Central Bank Governor Dr. Alvin Hilaire shared security features of the new bill. People rushed to the banks to have their $100 notes changed and there were long lines of customers at banks throughout the country, leading in many cases to frustration among customers. I said, what's the situation? Why haven't you been able to give out the notes? We were told by the central bank that you would give out uh, new notes from today. Um, she said the bank hasn't received it. So if Scotiabank Starlight hasn't received it, what's going on? Is it that left hand doesn't know what right hand is doing? Or this was the plan, it just hasn't been implemented yet? Several concerns were raised about the short time frame for the transition. Some of those concerns came from the business community. It's, it's unfortunate that at a time like this, when consumers should be focusing on shopping and when businesses should be focusing on driving commercial activity, we are distracted in dealing with a matter like this, which I know some of my members are saying that this is really distracting them from focusing on driving commercial activity at this time of the year. By the weekend of the 14th of December, social media revealed that counterfeit notes had already been manufactured. At the end of October, Unipet fuel stations were forced to close for a day, citing financial difficulties. Later on in December, the Paria Limited company refused to deliver fuel to Unipet stations, claiming the organization owned Paria over $100 million. The Prime Minister in Parliament chastised Unipet, which had decided to take Paria to court. And for some reason, having sold it, because I've now told that they have no fuel in the, in the tanks, <laughs> having sold it, and I, I, would, I, would hope, I would hope that they receive cash for it, because whenever you go by the pump, you pay on delivery. How then, Madam Speaker? How then? And if you're not as shocked as I am, I'd be surprised. How then is this company ending up owing Paria almost $200 million. A day later, Unipad disclosed that government had owed the organization $134 million in VAT and subsidies. Discussion between the two parties soon after resulted in an end to the legal action and the resumption of fuel supplies to Unipad dealers and the decriminalization of marijuana also took place this year. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said the new marijuana legislation, which was passed on December 16th, was an attempt to revamp this justice system and save taxpayers millions of dollars with less offenders having to spend time in jail. 
The bill was proclaimed on Friday 20th December by the President Paula May Weeks and took effect Monday December 23rd. The law provided for adults to have in their possession up to 30 grams of marijuana and every home can grow up to four plants. The law, however, prevents smoking of marijuana in a public place and or while operating a vehicle. About 100 people were expected to be released from the prison system once the proclamation came into effect. Mary Therese Bernard, TTT News.